Welcome to the PyTorch vs. TensorFlow course. I'm Negar with Real Python, and I'll be your guide. When you're starting to work on a machine learning project, one of the first choices you have to make is whether to create your model using TensorFlow or PyTorch. This course will help you decide which one of the two works better for your project. How? In the next few lessons, you'll grasp the fundamentals of tensors, which are the backbone of both of the frameworks. You'll explore the general features of TensorFlow and PyTorch. You'll become familiar with their coding style and explore a few code snippets. You'll delve into Torch and Keras frameworks. You'll see what Torch is and how Keras makes TensorFlow a lot more convenient to use. And finally, you'll be acquainted with the ecosystems of TensorFlow and PyTorch. For example, you'll get to know tools and websites that offer pre-trained models and built-in datasets and so on. Before you start with the next lessons, refresh your memory with the following tutorials and courses. The first one is an excellent NumPy tutorial that covers the basics of NumPy arrays, which you'll be using later. And the second one is object-oriented programming in Python, which is both a tutorial and a course. You'll need them later since some of the code snippets you'll explore use the concepts of classes and methods. In this video course, I'll give you an overview about TensorFlow, PyTorch, and surrounding concepts. While I will show some code examples here and there, there won't be any live coding. If you want, grab yourself a notebook and take some notes. Or just lean back while I present to you the pros, cons, similarities, and differences of TensorFlow and PyTorch. Next up is understanding tensors. Think of tensors as containers. Imagine you have a container, and this container can hold a bunch of numbers, like 3, 5, 8, and 7. And that's a tensor. It's like a container that can hold numbers. But here's where it gets interesting. Tensors can hold multidimensional arrays. Let's look at this picture. Tensors can be like rows of boxes or containers where each of them represents a piece of data. Machine learning models use these rows of boxes to process information. For example, 3D tensors can represent more complex data like images. How you might ask? Let's create a 3 by 3 tensor for a simple pixelated grayscale image. Each cell in the tensor corresponds to a pixel with white and black colors representing the maximum and minimum values respectively. Okay, here's the tensor that you're creating with a NumPy array. In the first row, you have 255, 0, 255. 0 is a pixel that corresponds to black and 255 corresponds to white. In the second row, you have 0, 255, 0, or black, white, black. And on the third row, you have 255, 0, 255 again. Now, what would this correspond to as a whole? Let's see. Here you go. Exactly how you described it in the tensor. You have a grayscale image with each row corresponding to the black and white pixels. In a nutshell, tensors are just containers for numbers, and they come in different shapes and sizes depending on the data you're working with. In this lesson, you'll gain a general understanding of TensorFlow, which is one of the most powerful and widely used libraries for machine learning. In the next few minutes, you'll explore simple code examples to understand the basics of TensorFlow, and you'll also learn about Keras, a crucial part of the TensorFlow framework, and its role in simplifying neural network creation and training. Additionally, the lesson will guide you through the TensorFlow ecosystem, highlighting where to find pre-trained models and how to effectively use them in your projects. Let's get started with the general features of TensorFlow. The term is derived from the words tensor and flow. You might remember what tensors are from the previous lesson. They're special containers for numbers. TensorFlow employs these tensors to organize and streamline data, optimizing it for the effective training of machine learning and deep learning models. TensorFlow was developed by the Google Brain team and released in 2015. Now let's see the code style of TensorFlow. In this code snippet, you're getting two NumPy arrays, array one, which is two, four, six, and array two, which is one, three, five. 
then you're transforming them into tensors by using tf.convert to tensor. And then you're multiplying them by using tf.multiply. The result is a three by three array, two, four, six, six, 12, 18, 10, 20, 30. As you can see, you were able to accomplish this task with a few lines of readable code. Let's get to some special facts about TensorFlow. TensorFlow makes it very easy to deploy your models, meaning using your models in production is straightforward. TensorFlow was considered superior to PyTorch till only a few years ago because PyTorch immensely lacked this feature. Some people still prefer TensorFlow in this. Tools you can use to deploy your models are TensorFlow.js, which helps deploy machine learning models using JavaScript. And also, there's a tool for deploying machine learning models in Swift, which is used for creating mobile apps, simply called TensorFlow Swift. Not only is it easy to deploy models using TensorFlow, but you can also use Google Colab to get started with TensorFlow. No need for any extra configuration. You just open the URL, create a notebook, and start coding. In addition to the tools you just heard about, you can find built-in datasets available in TensorFlow datasets. You can even access Google research datasets or dataset search to explore more. You might be wondering if it's possible to access pre-trained models. And yes, it is. You can do so through the TensorFlow Hub. Let's get into some technical aspects of TensorFlow. TensorFlow uses something called eager execution. Eager execution in TensorFlow is a feature that allows your code to run immediately, line by line, like regular Python code. Normally, TensorFlow builds a graph of operations, like adding or multiplying numbers, and then runs them all at once, which is effective, but not easy to understand or debug. Eager execution lets each operation happen as soon as your code asks for it, making it easier to understand what's going on and to catch mistakes as they happen. It's like the difference between planning out a whole day's activities in advance and deciding what to do moment by moment. You might have heard about Keras. TensorFlow uses it as its high-level API. But what is Keras exactly? 